guys, it's Lucy, and today I'm going to be doing a review of The Radical Element, edited by Jessica Spotswood. I was sent this book for review on NetGalley. The Radical Element is the second book in a series of anthologies that Jessica Spotswood has edited and brought together. The first one was A Tyranny of Petticoats, and I'm not sure exactly what that one followed, but The Radical Element follows girls over the course of American history who were radical in some way. There are a plethora of authors involved in this, all female authors. I gave this book four stars. I ended up really enjoying it. I will be doing individual reviews for each of the stories in it, but not like too in depth, obviously, because they're short stories. They're each like, what, 20 pages? but I will do like an overall review first and that review is basically I wasn't sure I was going to enjoy this. The first like four or so stories are really misses in my opinion and then it starts to go uphill and the rest of the stories are like great. I really like the whole idea of this anthology of the radical element basically being like there's like these elements in these girls that are radical but they're not always super overt like None of these girls are superheroes and they're not saving the world or anything. They are radical in their own ways and I really liked the widespread time periods as well as the diversity that was represented throughout the book. I think it goes from like the early 1800s to the, to the 1980s. So that is the time periods we're looking at and they're all very interesting. We follow girls from all walks of life, all different types of backgrounds. There are girls who are more affluent and girls who are not. So before I get into the individual reviews, I'll just let you guys know which stories were my favorite and least favorite, and then I'll tell you more about them and why when I do the individual reviews. So my least favorite story was You're a Stranger Here by Mackenzie Lee, which is unfortunate because I did really enjoy A Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue, and I'm looking forward to her next book, The Lady's Guide to Petticoats and Piracy. So maybe short fiction is just not her genre, or just maybe it was a story. And then my favorite was Glamour by Anna Marie McElmore, and that has put me on the path to read anything Anna Marie McElmore writes. So yeah, I'll get more into that as I do the reviews. I'm reviewing each of the stories in the order that they appear in the book. The first story is Daughter of the Book by Dahlia Adler. I gave this three stars. This follows a Jewish girl who wants to learn more about Jewish history. I did like this because I never really thought about Jewish education. I'm not Jewish, so it never really occurred to me what someone might have to go through to learn about their religion. Um, so I enjoyed that part, but for me it just wasn't a super captivating story. Nothing about the story really excels for me. Next we have Your Stranger Here by Mackenzie Lee, which I mentioned was my least favorite, and I also gave this three stars. This one was just boring to me. It follows a girl in the Mormon church during the very beginnings of the Mormon church, and it just wasn't very interesting to me. Mormonism is kind of interesting to me, but just the way this was done and also the character, like, it just wasn't captivating at all. And by the time I started getting into the story, it was over. So maybe just short fiction is not the right medium for Mackenzie Lee. Not sure. The Magician by Aaron Bowman. I gave this three and a half stars. It follows a person who is cross-dressing as a boy. And it's kind of implied that they might be non-binary. I'm not 100% sure, but I didn't really like the main character at all, which in a very short story is kind of important, but the story did keep me pretty engaged and it was interesting. Lady Firebrand by Megan Shepard. I gave this three and a half stars. This is set during the Civil War in the South, but it's about someone who rebels and they are also a disabled character as they use a wheelchair, which I thought was a very interesting aspect because you don't really think about disabilities and what people back then might have done about things. Like for example, I didn't even know that you could have a wheelchair back then. So the story was an interesting idea, but I just felt like it was too much crammed into too short of a space. Step Right Up by Jessica Spotswood. I gave this one four stars. This follows a girl who lives in an abusive household and who loves the circus. And I thought this was really interesting. I really liked this story. I liked the descriptions of the circus, especially and next we have my favorite story of the whole book, Glamour by Anna Marie McElmore. I already said that this made me want to read anything Anna Marie McElmore writes, and I gave this one five stars. This follows a girl in the early 1900s who is Mexican, 
but wants to be a part of Hollywood. And we also have a trans disabled character as well. And the writing is just beautiful. It features a little bit of magical realism and it's just a gorgeous story. I recommend picking up this book just for this story alone. Better for All the World by Marike Nijkamp. I gave this four stars. This follows a girl who is implied to be autistic, which I thought was another very interesting perspective. And I'm really glad it did that like the story followed her and it also deals with the idea of eugenics and the feeble-minded and such as this is during a time when disabled people and mentally ill people are especially discriminated against not that they're not discriminated against today but it yeah the eugenics part of this was a big part of the story this story definitely interested me in learning more about what was going on there so i definitely will be looking into that more when moonlight isn't enough by danielle clayton I gave this one four stars as well. This follows a black girl around the time of World War II and her family. This also features a little bit of magical realism. And this was a good story and I really appreciated the author's note for this one. All the authors write author's notes after the story to explain why they chose to write about what they did. And for this one I thought it was very interesting and gave me something to think about. The Bell of the Ball by Sylvanas Tosh. I gave this four stars and my only note was that I loved the I Love Lucy reference. But yeah, I just had a fun time reading this. This wasn't as supremely heavy as some of the other ones were. Land of the Sweet, Home of the Brave by Stacey Lee. I gave this four stars. This follows a half Japanese, half Chinese girl after World War II and after the internment camps that happened in California in the western coast of Japanese Americans. And so we hear a little bit of the aftermath of that. The Birth of Susie Gogo by Meg Medina. I gave this four stars. This follows a Cuban-American girl whose family moves from Cuba during the communist revolution that was happening in Cuba and they come to New York and it's about a girl who is kind of conflicted between her heritage and growing up in America and being an American. Take Me With You by Sarah Farzan. This is the last story in the anthology and I gave it four stars. I thought it was a good ending to the anthology. It's about a girl from Iran who moves in with her aunt and uncle in America during the Iranian revolution. And it's about her adjusting and dealing with the fact that her family is still back in Iran. So those are all the stories that were featured in this book. Most of them got four stars. One of them got five stars. And some of them did get three and three and a half stars. But yeah, so overall, like I said, I really enjoyed this book. I would recommend picking it up if you're looking for an anthology. If any of the premises sounded interesting to you, I would recommend picking it up. And yeah, so that's my review. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any opinions on this book or the other Jessica Spotswood anthology, feel free to leave a comment down below. And if you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to my channel because I make more videos where I talk about books. Again, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!